What's up and welcome to the Weightlifting Way of Life podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Ryan Capers, with your other hosts, Bailey Forrest and CJ De Palma. Always, other host. Always, yeah, I always forget. <laughs> I always say I'm your host and then you two guys, like, I'm the only host. Right. You I, guys are just You do in. talk the most. I, I don't talk at all. I just did. <laughs> right. It's a, you're the sound guy. Hey, sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> but so today we're going to be uh, bringing you a little bit shorter episode <clears throat> than normal. Uh, we're going to be doing our weekly news segment. Uh, talking about what's going on in the fitness world news-wise. So, Bailey, if you would start us off. Uh, I think most recently we had regionals end. Uh, CrossFit regionals, if that was confusing. Uh, what were the regionals most recently? Was it Central? Atlantic, like this past weekend. Yeah. Was Atlantic. Um, uh, Meridian and Pacific. Pacific. Yep. Okay. Our region, the Atlantic region, the Atlantic, closed out. Yep. Uh, Noah won. We walked away with it. Let me pull it up. Um, okay, I'm glad he has it. I didn't have I it. I got this. Noah won. John Colty finally made the push. If you guys, John Colty is uh, from Alabama. He has been at regionals like five times and never wow. never made wow. it, um, which is good for him. Ben Smith and Alex Smith both qualified uh, again. So congrats yeah, to just Smith like uh, Scott and yep. Saxon Pancake. Yep. That's right. That's right. That's Ethan cool. Helbig. Uh, it's his second year at regionals, and he qualified. He had a very, very good week. Um, Travis Mayer got pushed out, just missed it. Um, he struggled on week day one and couldn't quite make it up. Uh, Adam Klink, who is also from CrossFit Krypton, uh, with Ben and Alec and them, mm. had a great day one, was in the lead, and then uh, uh, you know just sort of fell off over the week. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. So two new names. Uh, let's see, females. Kind of went as expected. Cassidy, Emily Bridgers, one and two. Mackenzie Riley, Whitney Galen. Oh, Emily Bridgers went number two? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. a that's a highest finish she's had in regionals, isn't it? No, Emily won three three straight years. Oh, well, yeah. no, never mind. Wow. Sorry. Did I'll you, shut up now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cassidy won last year, but then Emily won three years in a row before that, I believe. Um, Did you see that uh, Emily Bridgers is retiring after this year? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Really? She made a post not, about that. Yep. How old is she? She can't even... I mean, she's in her 30s. Is she really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Oh, she that. looked really good. Yeah. <laughs> for being in well, her I mean, 30s. she, you know, like she was, she was a gymnast at UGA, fin- did all four okay. years there, and then took, I think it was like two years, did the whole um, like post college gymnast weight yeah. gain, which is like, from what I hear, almost like clockwork. They all gain weight as soon as they're done in college. Wow. And then, so she found CrossFit, I think, yeah. a couple years after college and uh, i mean she's like seven years now if not more eight years into crossfit so um emily if you're not if you're listening if you're not that old i apologize but let's look it up games has it 30 yeah see that's right. okay 30 i, I um she, she's obviously very fit so looks she, young but i could correct. see her being a fit 30 year old right um so that's the atlantic oh we'll go to team um uh, crossfit soul um one Good job, guys. Obviously, you're listening. Um, Oh, are they? Yeah. Nice. Right. Uh, Raw training, uh, CrossFit balance. Dwala Rangers finally made it, um, and then Hustle Hard made it back again. Uh, Dwala Rangers were uh, fourth last year going into the last event and uh, lost, so they've made the push. Um, Training Think Tank and a miss. Just missed it. Um, Yeah, it came down to the final event, right? Yep. Between them and Hustle Hard. Yep. And... uh, it was um it was good the team was team was a really good event so let's look at uh since it's all over the uh, overall the all regional board CrossFit Mayhem leads it off uh, CrossFit Invictus and then let's go yeah they're they're definitely uh, wait which it, team on Mayhem uh, just Mayhem Freedom um, of course they of course they did yeah they're mm. very good um, especially the four man team an now the four man team now I think helps them but it also um, I don't know if it does help them because I mean the other teams like Invictus X, um, Invictus Boston, and Don't Stop. I mean they're just it's gonna be it's gonna be a good game. It's gonna be yeah um, yeah it's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, you know I wasn't sure about the four man format at first, but now you know going through regionals it, it is definitely more exciting. Yep. Yeah. It, it's easier to keep up with who's on the team mm-hmm. and, and who you're pulling for. Yep. The I love the I do love the four man format. Yep. Yeah, so uh, change the dynamic a lot, especially with these big gyms that can have. 
if they had a six member team before it probably wasn't yeah. too hard for them to find two more right yeah i do think it is going to muddy the waters a little bit over the years as you see like some of these bigger gyms like pumping out multiple teams right but it's it's uh it's more fun for the viewer oh yeah for sure well and then i think this is where the push for you know i mean it is the it's still the affiliate cup right but don't stop took four athletes from four different like mm-hmm. parts of texas or different states yeah. brought them together and trained in the same gym so um you know it's but i mean that's just you know that's what mayhem does that's what invictus does they all mm-hmm. come but they are training in the same gym as long as they keep that i I think it's fine. You, you don't know, think the the guidelines should be more strict? I mean, I don't know. It's I mean, they got to train together for four months prior to the. They got to train together mm-hmm. before before January one, and they've trained together more than fifty percent of the time. Um, how are they? How are they proving that? Yeah, they they really they good. make them journal it and like log and take videos and things like that throughout the year. Okay. Um, I mean, they're pretty strict about it. You think it. it's a thorough enough process? I mean, it's I've I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen what they have to enter. I mean, it's as it's as good as it can be hmm. um, with the financial gains that can be made as right. a team. Right. We're not like at the million dollar prize pack yet. You know, mm-hmm. it will be one day. I think yeah, I agree. Um, when it gets to there, it'll be you know, like random drop-ins. Like where's blank, you know? And, mm. but anyways, a uh, fun fact for the all regional board, Matt Frazier did not win. Really? I didn't know that. Yep. Patrick Villner won uh, by quite a few points, 30 points almost. Uh, wow. So Matt <laughs> went 81st in the triple three. Uh, fourth, first, first, fourth, first for the all regional board. But I really think he made that push. I don't. Th- I just don't think he tried on the triple three because yeah. it's a really hard workout, yeah. and I think he just didn't need to. Personally, well, you, well, I just you, can't see him getting eighty first in any workout ever. Well, you you look at you look at Matt Frazier historically, mm-hmm. and he's he's not a guy that cares about anything but the games. Right. That's the only thing he cares about. So if he's dominating everybody in every single other workout at regionals, why would he care about a workout like a triple three? Right. Yeah. Right? Why would he care about going balls to the wall on every single workout yep. when he's going to win and he's getting to the final step of the process? Yeah, exactly. You know, so I, I yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a good indicator at all. I mean, <laughs> let's look at who wins the open every year. Yep. You know, very rarely the person standing on top of the podium yep. of the games. Um, so, uh, and you know, also you look at like the last two years of the distance events, he won, so yeah. or he was second. So I just can't see him like the triple three being an indicator of his, like I don't know, cardio. We'll say cardio. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. and then Katrin walked away with the female all regional um, by a good portion. T was right behind her. Mm-hmm. Annie, um, Kara Saunders, or Kara Webb. So, anyways, you know, it was really good. Interesting about uh, Katrin, you know, like following her on social media. It seems like everything. She's posting right now is is all about, you know, being hyper focused and and winning the game. Like yeah. she she's on a war path right now. Yeah. Do you think she's coming back to win another game? Yeah, I think it's going to be there. I mean, it's going to be between her, Tia, and uh, I think Carla Webb. I think mm. Annie. I, do you think? Ah, uh, man, maybe. I really think she could. Uh, you don't think well, Sarah has a shot? I don't know. We always say she does. I think Gosh. physically she's there, but yeah. I, I mean, something always happens. We'll just yeah. go with something always happens and. Um, but she's probably the the female that I pull for the most. I you really? know yeah I've just I just always liked her attitude and stuff and I don't know I, I like to see the like the happy smiley people win yeah. like like yeah. like Annie like I love to see I love to see Annie win yeah like that's awesome her and Carl Webb yeah I love like, Carl Webb too and I, and I don't dislike Catherine Davis right. I just you know yeah you know, yeah for sure I think they're uh, all awesome. I think Cassidy Lance has a good chance to get on the podium really yeah wow um and I think mainly because of uh, Venue and the style of workouts. We're looking at last year's workouts. Um, less grueling, less long. Overall, you know, more inside, more barbell, more regional style. Mm-hmm. Um, if you take out the triple three, I mean, Cassidy Lance is like second in the like overall. Wow. So, wow. Um, I think she's got a good chance. But anyways, that's CrossFit news. Uh, the CrossFit Games are God, August first through August fifth, Madison, Wisconsin. So uh, there'll be a lot of training and good volume going up to that you know make sure you're on instagram to watch all these people do um Mm -hmm. the uh, highest volume training they'll do all year so anyways that's uh crossfit news today out just kidding okay nationals weightlifting yeah hit us with some nationals yeah yeah, you saw nationals i don't know a couple weeks ago i don't actually know what date it was uh who we start with we'll start with sarah robles 
she showed up 90 plus just <laughs> and just made everybody look silly <laughs> yeah power powered everything just really oh my yeah. gosh it was disgusting oh she, oh my yeah. god <laughs> like and, and the coolest part about it is like those are pretty substantial numbers for her like yeah. those aren't toy weights for her yeah. wow and she still made Dang, them all look crashed. easy power did that crash on her too so yeah. she she power wow. snatched Woo! power cleaned what? and power jerked what uh, she get gold 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 yeah by far. so she had a 110 snatch 140 clean and jerk oh my god did she power 110 yeah was that 110 that was on the video yeah holy shit i thought that was 90 yeah, I thought they were green. They look green from back here. Yeah, Sarah. Sarah's a freak wow. of nature. I, I'm really excited to see where she's going in weightlifting, especially yeah. going in the next Olympics. Where do you th- where do you think the big pushes come from? I mean, she's not a young weightlifter. I mean, uh, she's well. She was a pretty heavy contender. Um, what was it? Uh, 2015 when she got hit with the the drug sanction. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then. Yeah. And then after that, she just came back with a vengeance. I mean, yeah. she was already a pretty heavy contender. She had already uh, been to the world championships, and you know, she, uh, you know, I'm really excited to keep watching her. And, and she's one of those people that just uh, that that I really, really appreciate. That's you know, like we talked about, uh, I think last time, people that it seems like all they care about is weightlifting. Right. Like that's their primary yeah. focus is being a champion, being a top level weightlifter being the best out there, winning mm-hmm. championships, and I have just immense, immense respect for athletes who conduct themselves in that way. Nice. Well, kudos to her. I, I hope she gets to, uh, where's 2020? Where's it at? Tokyo. Tokyo. I hope she gets yeah. to Tokyo and uh, medals again. No yeah. doubt. That'd be dope. Uh, She'll be facing against all the big dogs in. Yeah. I think she's got a good chance. Her numbers are I, there. I do. If she I powers do. 110, she's got a good chance to medal again. Yeah. Yes, she does. Right? Yeah, what you, I mean, it's like you got a total, like what, three hundred to win gold? Isn't that where it's at? For yeah, it's it's around there for the women's super heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some Powered also some to, pretty heavy contenders. Like there's a there's a Chinese super heavy yeah. who's just a monster. Yeah, she's an animal. You know, so well, it'll be interesting. Yeah. It'll be very interesting. We had a girl named Kate Vibert break uh, Maddie Rogers snatch junior record yeah oh junior record Others. yeah it was but still record. though i mean yeah. her junior record i mean this girl's got plenty more years i mean right. if she's she's a junior so she's under 19 or right. under 20 i mean and so she's got plenty more time to continue to develop as an athlete and uh and and she might be uh she might be the next maddie rogers yeah right uh, there's also another 69 i saw a video yesterday i don't know what her name is but i think she has the the clean and jerk junior record yep. and it's a battle between both of them, and apparently, I don't know what the next big meet is. Uh, it might be what Junior Worlds. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Junior Worlds. Then they should be together and competing and see who, who actually wins that for the U.S. But in the 105s, men, we had uh, D'Angelo Osorio. He was the champion. 153 snatch, 205 clean and jerk. Uh, I don't really think there were many 105s there. Uh, for I think he was the only big one big name there west kids didn't show up well uh, i think all 105s are big right yeah they're they're all fairly big okay, you know okay, over thank you, thank you know you. over under under 230 pounds over right. 200 pounds you know right. yeah uh what what do you think about uh cj i don't think we've talked to you about this i know me and bailey have talked about this amongst ourselves plenty of times what do you think about uh all these lifters who uh competed at pan ams and then the next weekend didn't compete at nationals their own country's nationals huh because there were there were a multitude of them, we won't call out any names, but there were uh, there were several athletes who were they were they all pretty off, big names and just, were they all from the same training camp? No, no different camps, absolutely different yeah. gyms. Okay, other yeah, ends yeah. of the country. Um, wow, interesting. I mean, so you know, uh, a quick glance, like I've a lot of high level weightlifters are very funny about peaking and like all that kind of stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, like being able to hit their numbers or like having their like their peak and then like you know their recovery or whatever could it be that could they just like you know like oh i just lift you know i just peaked i can't go out and you know embarrass myself i don't know but you would think you would think that if you're representing your country internationally you should be able to roll in any day of the week and win nationals yeah it's kind of my thought yeah Yeah. i agree you know like look at sarah Sarah rose Rose. i mean (laughs) she showed up and just powered everything made everybody look silly yeah did she go to pan ams yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. She competed she, at Pan Am. Did she win? Yeah, she got a bronze or silver, one or the other. 
that she's been. I'm not sure. You have to look that up. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's really strange. It is very strange. Could that it be something? I mean, like is is like there something? Is USAW pissing everyone off? I don't know. I don't. I don't know more so than usual. I, guess. I don't know. Is it personal decisions? Is it, is it yeah. coaches' decisions? Is it? Yeah, it's. I'm sure there's a lot more to it than than we can think of. But yeah, it's it is one of those things that you look at and it's like, ah, you know, I, to me, it's kind of a bad look. Sure. You know why? Like why not? Right. You oh, know yeah. that's the question. Like you, you're probably not going to get hurt. Yeah. It's could weightlifting. It be a, could it be a money thing? Where were nationals? Uh, uh, Salt Lake was it? Were they in Salt Lake this year? Or was it nationals? I think it was in Salt Lake, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe money thing? I think I she did check silver in Pan Ams. Anyways. All right. Do we uh, do we have any other news? Nathan Dameron, champion of the 94s. Of course. Not a surprise. That guy's an animal. Yeah. I think he is a lot. I think he's not one of those people that are kind of uh, flattening out as a weightlifter. I think he's got a... Uh, well, yeah, what? He PRs a squad every... Right. right? Dude, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, there was like a two-year span where he literally, like, I couldn't... Pull up Instagram yeah. without seeing him hit another set of eight at 600 pounds yeah. or whatever it was. Guy's an animal. Squats over 700, weighs under 200 pounds. I mean, yeah, that I'm I'm really excited to see him as a weightlifter. I think he has a uh, a lot more time in front of him where he's just going to be. Do you think he transitions to powerlifting with a squat like that? No. Why would you? Eventually, he's a weightlifter. What do you think he bench presses? Oh yeah, 315. Probably not. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, probably not. Yeah. Probably probably more yeah. than that, but. <laughs> But yeah, no, and animal. I'm really, I, I yeah. like Nathan Dameron. I, I'm uh, really excited to see where he goes. A uh, guy named Alex Young Wan Lee. He's a 69 kilo lifter. He won nationals. A, he's snatch. a 69. What did he hit? 125 snatch, 160 clean and jerk. Very impressive for a 69. Yeah. In America. Then we got. America. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, we got to preface that every time. Yeah, but I mean that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I followed him for a while. Very cool to yeah, see him he's, he's come out and win like that. Uh, Travis Cooper. Wow. Yeah, on the comeback, <laughs> baby. Oh, he, <laughs> I thought he was done. Straight up disappeared <laughs> for a while. Yeah. yeah. I, I got to Is watch. Is he still in 85? No, he's a 77. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, he was up in 85 before he left. Yeah, he was. Whenever he was heavily competing several years ago, yeah, he, well, he was went 77. 77 and, like, got gold in a nationals, like, mm-hmm. maybe four years ago. When I And then yeah, three years ago, know. went up to 85, and then I think, like, still medaled, and then left. Yeah, I got to see thing. him lift uh, a few years ago in person, and and he's a he's an interesting lifter. I've never seen any any uh, elite lifter with such a lengthy pre lift setup. It was oh, it was yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, is it long? But man, what a beast! The yeah. guy's an animal. Very yeah, he had sound. a one thirty snatch, one sixty five clean and jerk. So wow, it's pretty cool. Pretty good numbers. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, sixty two. Uh, I don't even know who this guy is. Daryl Barnes. Hmm, one of the twins. Uh, he had 105 kilo snatch, 140 clean and jerk, oh, as a 62. And then 56, you want to pronounce that name? I don't know that name. Brian Reisenauer. I, I've, okay. follow, I've followed him for a while. He's he's a, he's a very, very technical weightlifter. He looks yeah. really, really good when he lifts. He had a 104 snatch, 128 clean and jerk. Let's, uh, let's talk about our last topic real quick. What do we have on that? Which is? So we'll talk about uh, Jared Ernson make a, made a post recently. You know, he posts a lot of uh, a lot of stuff on Instagram, kind of technique stuff. That's always really interesting. Uh, he does a, a he does a, a great job with a lot of the stuff he does, kind of breaking it down into bite sized pieces. Some of the stuff like we've done on our on our Instagram page. Uh, Check it out, weightlifting yeah. way of life. Yeah, or weightlifting W O L. Hashtag head. plug. And uh, he 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 posts a lot of. Um, a lot of interesting stuff, just uh, basically little technique breakdowns and stuff like that. And uh, he talked about one about simplifying the pull and just kind of some of the ideas you want to be thinking about in the pull. Um, but, you know, somebody like us, uh, where, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about in weightlifting is more middle ground and hit specific positions, which you do in between is up to you. Uh, he took more of a stance of, you know, driving the knees back under the bar as soon as you pass the knee is not a great idea, you know, but he taught, he teaches a little bit more from a a quote unquote catapult perspective, delayed double knee bend perspective where you need to keep pressing away from the ground, keep pressing the bar up, you know, several, several inches past the knees. So an an interesting take, you know, definitely is. I don't, I don't know uh, if I, I think it depends on the, the lift actually, the snatch or the clean. Yep. Um, 
I think uh, a lot of posts on uh, social media have to take a stance, a hard stance on topics. Uh, that's what sells. Mm. And um, on that note, tune in to our next episode to talk about <laughs> um, weightlifting and fitness in social media and why um, very polarizing topics sell and middle ground doesn't. All right. Thank you guys for listening, and uh, we will see you next time. See ya. All right. Oh.